In this video, I'm going to show you how to rig a shrimp weedless. And this is just a, a very simple rig and it's surprisingly effective. And the reason why I believe every saltwater angler should know this is because, you know, using shrimp is very effective, like everything eats them, so you can go out and catch a ton of fish. But to maximize your odds of catching the most and the biggest fish is to fish very tight to structure, bridges, docks, rocks, you know, hard structure is going to always hold, or not, I shouldn't say always, but is almost always going to hold some, some feeding predators and you need to get down there really close to it. And the bad thing about using shrimp, especially even live shrimp or dead shrimp, is that if you leave the hook point exposed, you're very prone to getting snagged on the hard structure and it's just gonna cost you a lot of time. It's also gonna cost you even fish being caught because you're gonna be spending more time re-rigging less time actually fishing. All right, so here's the premise we're going for. For those uh, those like me who grew up bass fishing, this is almost like a Texas rig worm. We have a weight, like in many cases, when, when you get snagged on the bottom, it's actually the weight that gets snagged and not the hook itself. So we have a bullet weight, which is, again, will enable the weight to not get snagged. And then we have a J hook. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna rig this shrimp on the J hook so that the hook is not exposed. And let me just get this shrimp out here. So, so here's the shrimp. Right, in rigging shrimp, the, the biggest mistake people do is they rig it right here in the middle. That's the worst thing to do. So you need to either rig it on the head or on the tail, right? And so in this case, we're gonna be covering ground, like this, this rig that I've been using. I can, I can pitch docks, I can cover ground, I can really go out and find the best spots quickly as, as I mimic a scared shrimp in this case. So what I do is I tear the tail off. So I tear the tail off. So now we have this shrimp head, essentially. And what I do is I rig this shrimp just like, again, just like a Texas worm. So I go in to the, to the section, go in about maybe a quarter inch, and then the hook point will come out the bottom. All right, and so once, once you get the hook all the way past, right, this, this meat is holding the, the top part of the hook, is we're gonna go take it all the way down till, till the actual, the eye of the hook hits the meat, and then we're gonna go grab from underneath and then place the point of the hook in the shrimp, and then just thread it through, then just pull it up, pull it on up. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's just like this, where the hook point is just inside of the shell, right? So I can, I can bump up against pilings, I can go over rocks, I can get right in the structure, and this is not going to get snagged. But when I do have a fish bite, like when a good fish is on, I give it a good hook set, the hook point's going to go through the shell, fish on, and this just means, again, more caught fish with less re-rigging. And so when we put the actual weight up there, let me get the slide the weight on up, so here's how it'll look in the water, right? The weight is going first, leading the way, and, uh, and you can even jig it like a shrimp, but in most cases, I just cast it down, let it fall straight down the piling, and then just let it float for a while, let it sit. And then the fact that we're using a slip weight, the shrimp can kind of uh, move around in the current. It can, uh, it can look totally natural. You'll feel the strike. And then when again, when you do get that strike, you need a good hook set, almost like, just like bass fishing. But if you don't get a strike, then you can just take it along the bottom. You can be very aggressive, get right down there in the structure without the fear of getting snagged because neither the weight nor the hook will get snagged in the structure. All right, so now let's talk, talk about the equipment. First of all, again, just the, the complete rig. The, a key thing is the weight, right? If you, if you use one of, if you use like a split shot or anything that's not, that doesn't have this, this cone, this is just going to minimize the amount of snags you get. So the weight is very important and I have all the gear right down here. So what I've been using is just these, uh, these weights, they're, they're, this is like 99 cents for like five or six of them. It's just 3 16 ounce. That's been my go-to. I did get some smaller ones just to, uh, just to test it out. And so far I've liked these 3 16 ounce best for fishing anywhere from about three to 10 feet of water. If you go deeper or if you have some like really heavy current, you can go more. If you're fishing shallower and you want some more finesse, like if you want to drop down pilings for sheep's head and you want a slow drop, then maybe this, this lighter one would be better. So now for the hooks, right? It's really dependent on the size of the shrimp. You match the hook size to the size of the shrimp more so than the size of the fish you're targeting. And so what I do is for this size shrimp, which is about maybe four inches, is I use just these plain eagle claw, let me just move the, the so you can see the size. So this is size one, in case you can't see it. So size one, eagle claw, plain shank, nothing fancy. These are actually very inexpensive. So this has been a great, a, a great size for about the four inches. If I'm gonna go for bigger, bigger shrimp, then I'll go up a size. And if I go smaller shrimp, like three inches or smaller, then I would just, I would go down a size or maybe even two sizes. But it's not, you don't have to get it perfect. You just have to have 
you know, a good, a good average size where rigging it is, uh, is, is still as easy as possible. So that's really it. J-hooks have been good. What I would not recommend for this are circle hooks. I love circle hooks for, for live bait in most cases. But for this type of rig, this is when you're actively, you're actively fishing. If you use a circle hook and you try to wig it, rig it weedless, you basically have to set the hook for this to work. And so circle hooks, you do not set the hook. It'll, it'll decrease the odds of, 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 get, of catching your fish. So for this type of rig, this is for actively fishing. This is when you're casting and you're feeling the line, you're keeping the line tight, you're feeling strikes, and you're not just letting it sit and it's not sitting in a rod holder. If you're gonna be doing the rod holder type of fishing, use circle hooks so that the fish don't get, uh, don't get gut hooked because this rig will catch everything. Everything eats shrimp, so you're gonna be catching a lot of fish that, that might not be legal to keep. And so you don't want to be hooking those fish deep because that is the number one cause of fish not living after being released is, a, is being hooked in the gut. So be very, very careful on that. For actively fishing docks, bridges, any sort of hard structure, this is a really, really good rig to use. So I'll just get a close shot right here. In many cases, the very, the very back and the very front of these bridges hold the, the better fish. So we'll do another drop right here to see if we can't get something good. So a lot of fish messing with it. So I just have just enough slack in my line where, where I can feel the strikes, but not too much to where I'm just ripping it out. So you can see my rod, I don't know if you can see my rod tip or not, but it's just doing a lot of little small taps, and those are all gonna be small snapper. There's probably thousands. Oh, there we are. There's oh, that was a better fish. I was messing with the trolling motor. So it's when you feel the the, the heavy weight. Oh, there we are. There we are. That's a better fish there. Sheep said. Yeah, so that was uh, that was the key is is I was just you know I was letting those small fish mess with it. They're too small to take it down. You don't want to set the hook because you're going to rip it out of their mouths. And you wait on that thump, feel the weight, and that's when you set the hook. That's that's the game changer. Most people, and I did it for many years, is I would I would set the hook as soon as, as soon as I felt those little small taps. I would just go through three dozen shrimp in like an hour and hardly catch anything, but as long as you don't rip the hook out, you can catch a lot of these guys, and then we're gonna bring this guy home for dinner. Now, these sheep's head are surprisingly good. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this tip on the weedless shrimp rig. If you have any questions, please use the comment section down below, but more importantly, is if you wanna go out, and if you're a saltwater angler, you wanna go out and just catch more fish and better fish every single trip, be sure to check out our Insider Fishing Club, because imagine just how good it'll feel when you have the confidence to know that you're gonna have the proper game plan to catch whatever you're targeting, whether it's redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder, sheep's head, or if you just wanna catch a little bit of everything, we give you the exact game plan to go through every single week in 10 minutes or less. So click down below for more information. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. See you again soon. There's something about the water